So, um, yeah, I think in, we're, we're thinking maybe that uh, we needed to sell the name a little bit better to, you know, help draw the crowds in. We maybe probably could have had the word sexy in there or something like that. But um, anyway, we're, we're going to talk about EdgeGuard. Um, and uh, it's, uh, it's great to be here. Just uh, allow ourselves to introduce ourselves. So, yeah, uh, my name is Owen Keary. Uh, I've been involved with OWASP for, for 10 years, maybe. Um, yeah. Um, I suppose, you know, what I, what I do very much is I've been a developer, I've been a, a sort of a pen tester, and uh, currently I'm the, I'm the CEO of a, of a, of a European-based uh, vulnerability SaaS called uh, EdgeGuard. Irish-based. Irish, Europe. <laughs> yeah. Irish, European. Indeed. Um, yeah. I, uh, I put the photos up there just so you wouldn't think that uh, Owen is Raheem. Well, that was St. Patrick's own. Day. That's exactly. Let me, that's, that's pretty much what you look like in the office day to day. Yeah. So. Um, my name's Raheem Gina. Um, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm Irish from Ireland, uh, but I'm, I'm half Indian, so I've got, a, got a, the Indian name and uh, the Irish sense of humor, or so I like to think anyway. Um, so I'm, I'm a COO of Etchgan, and um, uh, you know, I've been involved in OWASP for, uh, for a, a long time, not so much uh, active these days. Uh, and, and I used to live here in LA as well, so it's great to be back. He also does uh, Borat impersonations for parties, I do. bar I do. mitzvahs, I do. And, and so yeah. on and so yeah. forth. That right. was, uh, I, I actually, I, I, that, that was while I was living here, and I actually had to pick friends up from LAX that day dressed like that. And uh, yeah, some people got it, some people were just looking at me very strange. <coughs> anyway, just a, a little bit on the, 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 the just overall uh, how this is going to be structured. Uh, I suppose, you know, uh, introducing EdgeGuard, it's just, um, you know, some code that we, we, we've open sourced as a project. We'll go into the background as to yeah. the attacks and risks and why we did this, the motivation, et cetera. Uh, we're going to uh, go through the, the, the product, what it does, or the code, etc. Not not you know at a certain level. Um, we're going to try and demo it. Um, the Wi-Fi here has been a little bit flaky, <laughs> so we'll try our best. Yeah. Uh, and that's it then, really. So. So um, it, it's very much around the idea of DOM, uh, DOM security. So um, attacking pe people's browsers, um, such that um, things like um, back-end security systems wouldn't detect this attack. Um, there's a lot of sort of things like uh, banking, tro Trojans, uh, malware, uh, like Tridex, for example, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And a lot of them, um, once you get infected and you visit a particular, say, banking website, they wake up and then they start to rewrite your web page. So if I visit bank.com, in effect, these things would start to rewrite the HTML and therefore convince people maybe to, to, to send uh, you know, data um, such that it could be harvested. This type of attack is very difficult to, uh, to, to detect because nothing hits the bank's back end, right? So it's, it's all DOM. Also, the idea of DOM XXS in general as a in, a in the security industry is quite um, difficult to detect. It's been one of those elephants in the room which we've, uh, we've never really cracked. Um, in addition to the idea of DOM XSS, it, it, because it generally it doesn't make HTTP requests, it means we can't proxy it, and therefore it's difficult to test for the tester as well. But the idea with EdgeGuard is in effect to, to, to give you the ability to see if a user of your web application, a user, uh, if you're working in banking, or if you're working in uh, you know, s some sort of retail business, um, it can, in effect, help you detect if, if one of your users is infected with something um, because you can't really determine if your user has antivirus, if they're, God forbid, using, still using Windows XP or IE6 or something like this. You know, a lot of people aren't like most of us here in this room, which are tech-savvy people. People just use the internet like they use a blender or a toaster to do their banking. So in effect, they may not, um, they may be infected, they may be infected for quite a long time. And the idea of, of, of client side and DOM security is, is to sort of, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a very, very difficult problem to solve. Um, so, so the idea with EdgeGuard is to try and help you, uh, help you detect this stuff. And we've sort of open sourced it uh, to, to that effect because we think people could maybe expand on it into the future. So, um, I mean, malware is one aspect of it as well. Uh, as Owen mentioned, it's very much focusing on 
uh, your end users, client type, uh, I suppose it's a detection framework. Um, you know, if you, you're thinking about, uh, you know, uh, uh, attackers um, attacking uh, companies, organizations, servers directly, at some point they figured out, hey, why am I attacking this bank directly when all I have to do is attack its end users? Uh, why go after, you know, Fort Knox when I can just, you know, hit uh, uh, little, my, my, my grandmother who's, uh, you know, trying to log on to her online bank? Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot easier. Uh, so ideas, uh, things, you know, obviously, you know, there's, there's the malware aspect where maybe a computer's been infected. Um, it, it's, it's hijacked the browser, hijacked the DOM in some way to try and exfiltrate data, et cetera, as Owen mentioned. Uh, as well, one aspect of it, uh, which, which, which uh, Edgeguard covers is uh, for cross-site scripting attacks, DOM-based and reflected as well, and uh, and, and uh, HTML injection, uh, things like you know cookie theft, where you you know uh, get hijacked, uh, cookie gets stolen, somebody can then use that to perform session hijacking. Uh, the idea where you might have uh, malware, etc., doing key logging locally uh, within JavaScript, uh, and then of course phishing attacks, um, where you are you know your end users are you know, broad scale phishing attacks or spear phishing, uh, you know, to try and uh, take some data of, of, uh, of use from them, uh, trick them into uh, disclosing uh, whatever, whatever that is. So, so the risks are very much around fraud, um, you know, fraud, you know, PII or personal identifiable information. You know, bottom line, if you steal that, what are you going to do with it? Commit fraud. Um, if you're going to steal intellectual property, what are you going to do? Commit fraud. Um, botnets, you know, the big trend now in botnets is uh, hooking people to be cryptocurrency miners. A lot of that's JavaScript based. It's the idea is, is that your DOM gets infected and then you have this JavaScript code running and running. Again, a lot of the JavaScript code, a lot of the cross-site scripts obviously do off-domain requests. So they're outside of the domain of the legitimate application or, or what the user is actually doing. And then we also have a tribute to Rick and Morty called Terry Fold, which is just something that we particularly like. Well, I, w I was going to say on another slide that there's two uh, badly hidden Rick and Morty references in the slides. And if anyone can pick out both, then um, there might be something special for them. Even though we have nothing to give them. <laughs> well, we can, we can talk about that. I'm later. not going to get uh, bogged down in, the, in, in code here, but this is sort of an example of a, of a DOM cross-site script. Um, so you have a URL here, and you have a, an anchor or a hashtag after HTML. Um, the hashtag or anchor is, in effect, in, in W3C parlance, is called a, a URL fragment. And anything after that doesn't get sent to the server. So the server only sees the request to load a page. Um, the JavaScript then, when the page is loaded, in effect grabs the anything after the, the, the name parameter and in effect just rewrites it. That's a typical DOM cross-site script, right? It's nothing special there. The point to be made is that the backend server, your IDS, your IPS system, your million dollar shiny box with lots of lights on it that's when the meta protect your enterprise doesn't detect this attack on your users, right? So what we're trying to do in effect, even though we're repeating ourselves, but somewhat in, in a more deeper way, is the idea that uh, it, it's difficult to detect DOM. It's difficult to test for DOM because DOM is, um, doesn't generate HTTP requests. So if any pen testers here, hands up, All right? So there's one. Anybody else? Developers? You're not a pen tester. <laughs> so the, the, the idea is, I don't know, uh, uh, are we dev folks? Security people, dev? Okay, so I don't know, if you ever, if you ever uh, use a proxy like Fiddler or something to test something, if you put a link in with a hash in it, anything after the hash doesn't go through the proxy. Um, so how do you test for that? Uh, how do you detect it? So the idea with EdgeGuard is, is it gives you the ability to try and pick up on some of this type, type of stuff. Um, so, you know, again, if you look at sort of a lot of the, the tools, the commercial tools out there in the industry, they all go on about um, detecting cross-site scripts. Most pen testers uh, find lots of them every day. You know, the, the novelty of finding cross-site scripts on websites wears off quite quickly. But um, it's, it's a little bit more difficult. So you can either use SAST or static analysis techniques to detect cross-site scripts, um, or IAST. Um, uh, you know, to certain degrees as well. What, what, what? So the idea of, of testing um, using traditional pen testing methods for, for DOM issues, 
uh, can be a little bit more convoluted. It generally, the pen tester needs to understand what they're testing for, which is always the case as well. In effect, the, the the idea of detecting this, because we're not we're not let's not focus on cross site scripting all the time. What we're trying to do is detect any attack on the user's browser, right? So this could be a malware base. It can be an off site redirection, data exfiltration from their browser. They think they're submitting it to the bank, but it goes off to somewhere in Dublin, Ireland, for example, rather than in, in the U.S. You, you know, typically, you know, people would say Russia or China, but I'm actually going to say Dublin, Ireland, because there's plenty of evil people there. And, and the idea will be how do we how do we detect that? Um, and, and with EdgeGuard, it helps you helps you detect that type of thing. So, EdgeGuard, just kidding. Really, what it is, uh, I suppose, it's a framework, um, and it's all I suppose written in JavaScript um, for JavaScript. Um, the idea, as we've sort of said, is you know to detect attacks against um, end users, really uh, uh, browser-based attacks. Um, and the idea is, um, you know, obviously those attacks, you know, where people are going to have data stolen and things like that. Uh, it's very much a detection um, control, I guess. Uh, you know, I suppose often a lot of security folk focus on, um, you know, different types of attacks. Uh, you know, where a lot of the talks I go to, you know, not just this conference, but lots of conferences. Uh, you know, there's always different types of attacks, new avenues to attack different things. Uh, fundamentally, a lot of the problems are still the same. Um, so, you know, par part of this, you know, internally we do, you know, projects of stuff that we think is cool. Um, and the idea is, we, you know, how do we help people defend against lots of these types of attacks? So uh, that's kind of the motivation behind this sort of stuff. Um, and, you know, it's not foolproof, uh, but it's, it's uh, you know, it, it's, a, it's a start, something we found interesting, and hopefully um, anyone here is, finds it interesting too. It's free. It's free. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's, this started off as a, a sort of a, a product idea for, um, within within EdgeGun, um, but we found um, it was better to give it to people to play with and build on it. So, there, for example, there's a project in OWASP called App Sensor. Anybody familiar with App Sensor? There you go. Is it still live? Um, I think it still is. Yeah, I'm not yeah. sure. A lot of projects in OWASP tend to sit around in limbo. But um, so app sensor will be sort of a thing where if, if you can detect malice in your application, you might be able to do something about it before things get exploited or whatever. Um, we, we, we felt like that this wasn't the way we were going to go with the company. We said, listen, somebody cleverer than us will take this and use it and build on it. And, and that's sort of the idea. Do you want to explain this? Or we one? might do it ourselves at some point. Um, yeah. Yeah. So th this is really how it works in a nutshell. Uh, so so you have your own web application that you want to defend your end users. Uh, so what you do is you uh, use uh, you include EdgeGuard. So your end users go visit your bank, so their banking site or whatever. You have EdgeGuard in place. Uh, it'll load that up and it'll effectively work within the, the contents, uh, you know, the DOM of that browser uh, for that session. So um, the idea there is that, you know, that's all fine. You know, anyone who doesn't have a problem with their uh, site, you know, they, they have all their antivirus up to date. There's no uh, tax there. That's fine. There's, nothing happens. Uh, let's say, for example, though, uh, moving from number two there, uh, if the... Um, if your end user is somebody who never has installed antivirus in their life, their machine is riddled with malware, uh, maybe they've just been subject to a phishing attack or another type of cross-site scripting, attack, reflect across cross-site scripting. Um, what, what the idea there is, whatever the attacker wanted to do at that point, uh, probably something like either forging a transaction somehow uh, or uh, you know, taking the data directly from them, uh, maybe something they might use later, um, then the idea is that EdgeGuard kicks in when it notes, notices the abnormalities, and we'll go through what that means. Mm -hmm. um, and at that point, it sends some type of uh, uh, cross cross domain alert um, to uh, well, effectively, you probably in any kind of realistic production scenario want to feed that into a seam uh, or something like that, some kind of um, security uh, event uh, management system. Uh, we have a very simple logging um, yeah. uh, plugin just to demonstrate it. So but, what, uh, what we could have done is, you know, and people can do this very simply, you know, you get a message from EdgeGuard on our logger. We'll see a demo of this shortly. But when you get the message, you may want to be able to kill the user session. You may be able to want to block or prevent 
Edge got it in its current form, logs and tells you. Um, blocking and preventing things in a false negative way can be a career limiting move. But something else just to focus on this is that um, the web application here with EdgeGuard in it, it's not a plugin or anything like this, it's just an include, right? So the idea will be is that the browser includes, in effect, a JS file in their web application. That's all they need to do. Um, and in effect, then um, there's a separate, uh, in the case of this demo, the, the, there's a separate uh, AWS based server which catches logs as bad things happen on, on a client browser. Yep. Okay, so how does it work? Well, the idea is um, it, it, it really looks for certain types of things, uh, changes, mutations, etc., that happen in the DOM. Uh, and we'll go through them in a bit more detail. Um, but uh, the idea is they're, you know, um, cross domain requests uh, in particular um, and a few different types of. Um, uh, uh, aspects of uh, in JavaScript, uh, if, if it detects changes, uh, things like anchor tags, HTML forms, uh, image source attributes, uh, you know, there's a big list of things there it goes through. Um, if there are abnormalities there or mutations, um, it, it should send, you know, the idea is that it sends an alert and therefore that's, uh, you know, that's yeah. what you then so, so, so very simply the idea would be, you know, if I was going to steal data, um, you know, with malware, um, you know, my malware, or you know, let's focus on malware for example. It would may may rewrite a page and put in a false login page or something like this, asking somebody to re-authenticate or something like this. And obviously, when they submit that data, it would shoot off somewhere else, and and it wouldn't be obviously to the bank. So in effect, Edge can would detect that cross-domain attack. Um, in addition to it, it also detects um, mutation. So we're using the uh, the mutation, the object mutation API is part of EdgeScan. Object mutation API is a W3C standardized API, which in effect monitors the DOM all the time. And, 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 and if something changes the DOM, it triggers an event and you can do something with it. Um, so in effect, you know, the idea of the list here, but basically HTML elements. So if a HTML element is, is injected on, you know, in line, <coughs> Or if, if there's sort of a, some sort of injection attack, um, the idea will be that this mutator would wake up and go, I see this page has changed, and, it, uh, and therefore um, uh, detect the actual attack. Yep, so as we said, you know, the developers of whatever website they want to protect, um, they will only need to include the, uh, the, the, the JS, uh, and the idea there is it loads first. Um, how it sends the request is it uses uh, cores and HTML5 for uh, more modern browsers uh, and falls back to JSONP for older browsers. Um, it's 6 KB, so it's not huge. We're trying to keep it as light as possible. And uh, yeah, that's really it. But uh, the, the main, I suppose, one of the main things it focuses on is utilizing the mutation observer um, uh, APIs to, uh, I suppose, to, to, to check out for any kind of strange uh, abnormal uh, behavior. So I think we'll try to have a little demo, which might You're make using, it. You're uh, using the, uh, the California I'm Wi using Santa Monica Wi-Fi. Wi I thought Wi there was going to be something in here, but we'll see how it is. It was, uh, a, it's, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, there you go. So look, we'll, we'll, we'll give it a go. We'll see how we get on. Otherwise, we can talk in intricately about the, uh, the slides. Uh, we could, we could. Uh, okay, so look, th this is this is just an example, uh, an example of a hacked website. Okay, it's damn vulnerable web app for anyone who recognizes it. Um, you know, it's 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 a handy tool. What what we've done is um, we're using this as our dummy any app. It could be a banking site, could be whatever it is. Uh, we've changed it slightly to introduce um, different types of, of of attacks that might you might find. Um, you know, if you've been fished or uh, if you have malware, you know, d DOM injection type stuff. So what we have on the other side is the, the logger. Just to I know, the logger. I'm, I'm trying to get the logger. We That's haven't logger. rehearsed this too much, you probably know. <laughs> so on the other side, we have a logger, it's in AWS. It just sits there waiting for connections. Um, so because it's using cores or JSONP, if something happens on one of your browsers that's being affected, your that browser will in effect if it has edge guard, if that app has edge guard installed in your browser, it will actually send a, a message to our edge guard logger, and in effect saying something weird has happened. 
So in effect, what we're doing is we're taking everything away from the back end and in effect detecting malice on the client side. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, so for the first one, the first type of attack, we just have a, a couple of samples here. Uh, would be you know adding an image using image source attribute and uh, pulling in um, uh, something from uh, you know you could probably maybe use this for uh, session hijacking grab the cookie send the cookie for this browser session to uh, another domain that type of thing so the idea here is that this is already a user that's been hacked somehow uh, and and hence the detection framework kicks in. So just, just to explain a little bit more, if you can inject an image tag um, um, into a user's browser, you know, the image has to load from somewhere. And, and in effect, if you can do that, it means you're forcing the browser to load, or make a request to somewhere to load this image that maybe doesn't exist, right? And therefore, because we're, we're, we force the browser to make a request to somewhere, wherever this fictitious image is, we can um, steal other pieces of data and, and add it onto that request and in effect steal uh, people's cookies and stuff like that. Okay, so just to show you as well, I just have it plugged in here. Uh, this is Burp Suite, it's just a, a web proxy. Uh, if you're a pen tester, you'll probably know what this is, a uh, developer maybe as well. Um, it's a client-side proxy, so I, I, what I've done here is I've proxied the, the, the demo vulnerable app, damn vulnerable web app. So any requests, any communications it tries to make to the internet will, will go through here. Um, just to sort of highlight some of the uh, the activity as well for these fictitious attacks. So let's just say, you know, we have the, the add an image one, right? So nothing happened. We don't see anything. Uh, in the background, we'll see, uh, we see a request here to your evil server. Um, and the request literally grabbed the, you know, the session ID there and posted off to my evil server, which is my phishing site that I'll set up that I'll, just my listener that I'll, that's where I'll, uh, uh, that's where I'll get all the data, uh, the collection point. Um, so the idea there with EdgeGuard then, what it picked up, um, this was the, the, the user's browser, the one that was attacked, made an outbound request uh, once it noticed that uh, somebody had actually uh, maliciously inserted, uh, you know, used the, 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 the image um, uh, source uh, mutation. And uh, so what it did is it sends a request from that browser to our logging service. So again, this could be your, probably be a seam. Uh, what you do with this at this point then is up to you, you exactly. Uh, you know, if this was a banking site um, and, you know, depending on maybe the URL or whatever was, was uh, you know, what, what the data that was coming in here, you, you might want to do certain things. Let's say, for example, you know, that, that's... Um, some person's account, you might want to maybe put a, a fraud watch on that account. You might want to contact that user and say, hey, I think whatever you know, browser you, you know, you're using, your home PC is infected or something like that. Uh, or maybe you want to block their account or lock it or something like that. It, again, it depends on what the app is, depends on what your business is, uh, but there's tons of use cases for it anyway. So let me recap here, right? So, so I'm on Chase Manhattan Bank or something, you know, more closer to home. Uh, that bank has EdgeGuard I think installed. it's just called Chase. Is that what it's called? Just All right. Chase Bank. And in effect, what we have is uh, it has EdgeGuard installed, and we have our catcher sitting in some socks somewhere. If, if uh, a user um, of that banking application uh, is, was infected with this type of attack, uh, EdgeGuard would see there was a, a vector here, which is the mutation, which means an image source is created on the page. Here's the link where the image source is being pulled from. Uh, so in effect, it, it forced the web application to make a request to evil.com, and this is the IP of the infected user. So in effect, it, all of a sudden, because traditionally we, we don't really have much visibility over how secure our users are, what we have now is a timestamp. There's a lot more information here as well. Um, nothing personal but identifiable, but things like uh, the time this happened, maybe what page the user was on. So you can see it was on this page here. And in effect, uh, the SOC could see, uh, one of my users seems to be infected. Uh, a link off site you know, uh, was sent. It looks evil. Here's, here's the user's IP. Here's where they were in the application. Here's the timestamp. And in effect then, with some jiggery pokery on your back end, you could probably figure out what individual is infected. They give them a call and say, hey, did you ever hear of antivirus or something like that, right? So it's sort of that level of, of, of visibility. 
Um, I mean, you could as well, you could include some kind of unique um, uh, procession token right, or something right, like yeah, that to identify. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's up to you to play with it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, that, that's a really good question. Um, we've thought about that, right? We said we'd build it this way. You can do anything you want with the event. Um, we, this is open source now. We didn't want to start blocking stuff because if you start blocking legitimate stuff, we, what, what you can do, let's say a lot of sites do have off-domain requests already, you can actually whitelist those so they wouldn't come up here as events. Like this year, pulling you know, iframes or whatever from other sites and stuff. But, but we didn't want to get into the idea of blocking stuff because that, that can be, uh, as somebody told me before, a career limiting move in terms of you're blocking people's legitimate stuff, right? Now, but it's super possible to be able to do that. You can do anything you want. Um, once, you, once you detect it on the client, you could actually then get the client to do something and not come back. You can do whatever you want, right? But for the, pur for the purposes of this sort of uh, open source, uh, you know, version of, of, of EdgeGuard, it's very much, um, you know, you can just do, do run this and see how it goes and then go go from there, you know, build on it. Okay. Um, all right. Next example here, we have um, just an insertion of a fake login. So, uh, you know, if I'm being fished, I get this other login prompt. I, it, you know, it's obviously engineered to look like the real legitimate site that I'm expecting. You know, I don't know because I'm just an end user, so I, I obviously type in my password um, and uh, click login out of the way, little box. And we can see here I've been redirected to evil.com, which we use an example that it is actually a real domain. They and must it's get for sale, weird, I believe. So. They must get weird traffic from us because it's in all our demos for everything. Um, <laughs> But uh, if anyone's actually ever looking at the logs, that is. Um, so what happened there? Well, let's have a look in our proxy. So you can actually see that it made a, uh, you know, a, a get request to evil.com with the password, uh, username and password that I put in. Um, so the idea here is in, here we go, uh, EdgeGuard anyway. So the user's, the affected browser, which has EdgeGuard running in it, um, picked up the a two things um, the fact that there was a form action create so you know the the, the DOM was manipulated to uh, you know to create this fake form uh, which had you know a, a path that was not uh, expected <clears throat> uh, and then as well the, the submit as well uh, so it was two, so two, two even if the user didn't click on on the form the the monitoring people <coughs> looking at this would actually have seen the form action create already so maybe they didn't fall as far as to submit their stuff, but you can still see that something weird happened to that user um, without them losing their password. So we're, we're, we're sort of looking at two there, we're two pieces there. It's the off-domain uh, sort of uh, transmission of your data outside of your <coughs> application. And it's also the, the mutation, which is the insertion of the fake log uh, in login form in the first place. Okay, cool. Uh, another quick example here. Um, this one just changes links. So you can see here, uh, see the instructions link there. If we look at the URL, the URL has been changed to, uh, to evil.com again. You know, obviously, we, we, if, we, if we're not looking at where the, uh, the sources have changed, uh, we might be... Um, to a phishing website or something yeah, like exactly, that. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So we see, you know, it, again, logs those types of vectors too. Um, let's see here. Uh, fourth one, fake home page. We have a um, the home link here has been uh, rewritten. So hovering doesn't actually show uh, in the the um, uh, in the status bar that it has actually been rewritten, but it has. So when you click on it, you'll see we've redirected that to our fake site uh, on a different domain. Uh, and again, those types of events as well. It's the the href was mutated, so pick that one up. So we're just demonstrating there is um, the the last example there was um, the injection of a piece of JavaScript, um, but it's not it, it's um, it's not inline JavaScript. It was an event handler. So the event the event handler um, overrode the actual click, and and so the event handler, if you dig it into it with the Chrome tools or something. You can see that um, 
it, it overall, the fact that if you click on a certain href, it actually rewrites the href and sends out. So it, it, it's a piece of JavaScript as opposed to um, an inline injection of HTML or href. Cool. And um, last example here where we're um, going to send the entire uh, DOM at that spe specific moment uh, using um, an XML HTTP request to another domain. Um, and if we have a look here, we should see there was a post request there to you know our arbitrary domain. That's a giant uh, parameter there, uh, data, which was the entire contents of that um, DOM at that time, that page. So if there's any, obviously any, uh, data there we want to scrape or whatever if you're an attacker you know that that's a useful useful thing to do uh, and then um, we can see here you know the, the 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 logger picked up the fact that it was an off domain request with you know with with, well, with, the, with exactly yeah so cool. so yeah there that works yeah great that's how it okay. works kids yeah Woo. okay so so let's just a little bit more. Uh, we have all those examples in, in Yeah, in some slides. examples there anyway. Uh, you can see the source code of the injection and stuff. We don't need to go through them. Yeah, now, but yeah. Cool. So that was uh, the idea there, yeah. So just a little bit on the alerting side, I suppose, you know, logger, it's just a very basic logging tool. You know, there, there is tons of other stuff you could put in there, uh, you know, with some ideas of stuff we want to add. Um, you know, uh, the, you know, uh, I think you know pull it, plugging it into a into a seam is really where, or where you're going to do or, or, or yeah exactly exactly and then using that wherever internally however you manage your own security events that type of thing. Um, anything else there? Anything else cool? Um, no, no, no. Pretty much though, you know, it's it's all there. Um, again, I said they are they are time stamped. We don't pull. Um, Let's say it's a was things by default, like uh, ID identifiers, which will identify an individual. The implementation, the reference implementation doesn't do that because um, for personable identity information, you know, PII reasons and for data privacy reasons, protection, uh, pretty, pretty big thing in, in Europe, Europe is, is quite like strict. So, um, yeah, yeah. So, a little bit more lax over here. But yeah, yeah, it's all good. We're all chilled. But we're yeah. All ruined yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So it's the idea is you know you know you know because it's um, a core's request, um, you know you could send it to a seam, you could send it to a Trenton to Intel and alerting system, whatever you want. You know again, it's it, it's 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 there. It's open source. You can play with it as you wish. Um, so that's just a little bit on the logger, uh, but we we demo that, so that's no big deal. So there's a few other features um, as part of it. Uh, you know, I suppose just background into, into how to do some of this stuff. Um, you know, the, the, the scripts that are loaded, obviously, uh, you know, the, you can look at through what points of the source code various things happen. Uh, the idea is that obviously uh, it loads first. Um, from that, um, there is, uh, you know, existing code detection. Um, it, uh, so there, there's a sort of a, a fingerprinting of existing scripts. Um, and and you, you whitelist these as well, so it knows what is, uh, when you're pulling um, JavaScript in for your own app, the legitimate stuff, it knows what's what's meant to be there and what's not. Um, so uh, the the idea there is that for anything that's altered, that's, you know, it's making a comparison that way. Uh, there's also the uh, timers uh, aspect of it, so if there is um, timers built into, you know, people have, have put in uh, residual timers, they'll be detected, uh, you can pick them up, just in case stuff is meant to load later on. Uh, the idea there is, you know, uh, EdgeGuard will pick that stuff up. So very much these, these various features are, are um, they're sort of built <clears throat> to, right, we got EdgeGuard, it works, and then Hacker knows EdgeGuard is enabled on this site, so they'll obviously try and inject something else, maybe a JavaScript to circumvent EdgeGuard, or whatever that may be. So the idea with these is to try and get EdgeGuard as a, as a, a, a functional unit, you know, to self-defend a little bit. But if you think about it, this is a an arms race. Um, I think every time, um, every time you know a hacker would come along and, and be able to circumvent EdgeGuard. What we've done in very much, I think, is is hard the bar massively. But if you use EdgeGuard for as an example, but I, I think you know. Wily hackers could circumvent EdgeGuard, and Edge and the EdgeGuard, whoever's developing it, would have to, you know, go back and do more. Very similar to the, uh, I don't know, for, for for hacker people here, like the idea of X-frame options, um, if for for uh, clickjacking. And you know, before we had the X-frame options header, 
um, we, we had JavaScript trying to detect if I was in a frame or not. That might make, make much sense to some people there. But the idea was it was it's always a constant arm race. So, you know, we're not saying it by any means edge guard is a is a silver bullet, but for your typical drive by cross site script or your typical malware, um, it, it could raise the bar dramatically. Yep. Um, just a little bit more there on on the on the overrides for WebSockets and XHR. So and it's just pointing to where you can find all that stuff. Um, you know, initially there's the DOM watcher aspect. Um, so it'll Oh, sorry, <laughs> should scrape. Um, uh, yeah, scrape the DOM to see if if uh, you know changes have been injected, etc. Um, we're going to check the um, to see if new elements are created, and then also check the attributes as well to see if they've been modified. Um, yeah, and that's really it. And so then you know the the, the there's a whitelist you can build in uh, server side config of domains that you know uh, um, you know most most rich web apps these days are going to pull in. Uh, communicate with various different sites as well. Uh, CDNs obviously and yeah, whatever. exactly. They're, yeah. I mean, they're all legit, so you don't want your, nobody wants their logging system, um, you know, uh, false positives, etc. So, you know, you can whitelist them as well, so you don't, you just clear out all the noise. Um, so, yeah, I suppose closing thoughts, I mean, Owen really went through some of these as well. You know, uh, I suppose, you know, like anything, it's not really ever going to be bulletproof. Uh, and again, it is very much sort of an arms race thing. It's like you, you uh, up the ante, up the bar a little bit. Um, you know, uh, at least if you make your site, it's the same analogy um, that, that that goes on. You know, if you make your site slightly harder to attack, um, you know, uh, attackers of certain ilk will will be lazy. And if that's harder, they'll just go into their competitor and attack them instead until they then maybe equal something and then, you know, that kind of way. Um, it's if you're, you know, the, the, the old adage if you're being chased by a uh, you know, bear, you only need to outrun the guy who's, you know, slower than you. So, um, okay, so yeah, feedback, welcome on it. If anyone gets a chance to play with it, that'd be cool. Um, just some stuff on the license stuff there. It's, uh, you know, free for non commercial yep. purposes. Um, there's the code available there. Huge thanks to our CTO, Owen Mooney, uh, who did a lot of the, uh, the, 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 the groundwork for yep. the dev stuff. Yeah. So it's there, um, you know, try it out. Um, it, I think it's reasonably easy to implement and understand. If you don't know JavaScript, maybe not. Um, and, you, and again, if you have any questions, you know, we, we may not guarantee, you know, we, we're not going to have a support sort of What's agreement the here. Well, you know, it, it's very much for every time we, we help you. For a pint of Guinness, I'll give you his mobile number. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, but anyway, you know, the idea will be if you know if you have any thoughts or anything on how to how to play with it, or, or or if you have any use cases that are interesting or anything like that, right? We'd love to hear it. It's there. Um, yeah, and we'll, like we'll be adding on to it over time as well. Um, yeah. you know, there's there's tons of ideas yeah. there for for things to add to it. Do you want to mention that? Oh yeah, the uh, sad support. So you, I, I don't know. It's a uh, it, it came out yesterday. Um, it's it's not really. It's it, it's very much a, a technical report. It looks at things like DOM XSS, like client side browser security. Um, it's based on the assessment of thousands of of, of full stack systems in the, in the twelve months to December. Um, it's probably interesting because I think if you read the reports, which is like most of the statistics I did myself, I do it every year. It's very painful, but I, uh, I we grab all the data sanitize it and, and build a report from it. Um, compared to some of the, the bull crap you, you get from vendors saying, you know, you better get, you know, my product or you're, you're going to get hacked. It, it shows you the types of vulnerabilities. There's a new piece on it on the vulnerability taxonomy, which is the most common types of vulnerability, both in the host layer and the web application layer. And it's very realistic. There's no, there's no real stark 95% of all apps are, are, you know, are in trouble, any of this sort of malarkey. Um, but but it, it, I think it's reasonable. So you know, it's on our it's on our side if you want to have a look at it as well. All right. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you guys. Yep. That's it. Any questions at all? Or anything?